Identify your vision and how or what you want to experience in your life. You don't always have to know what it looks like, but what I teach my clients is how is it that you want to be feeling and experiencing your world 24 seven. We go with that and then we remove the external stimulants to have us feel a certain way. Everything is generated internally and then it's like, okay, I got, I know where I'm going. I know how to put myself back on my path. When we know and we have a vision for our life and we can recreate those feelings that we want to feel, we naturally go the way that we want to go and experience the things that we want to experience. Hello, beautiful people. Yes, I am talking to you. Are you ready to feel confident AF, free from the expectations and opinions of others and create ultimate self-trust in who you are, what you say, and how you show up in every part of your life? If you answered a hell yes, I am, I guarantee this episode will empower you to be 100% yourself, 100% of the time, no shame or guilt needed. It's time for you to strut your stuff, express yourself with freedom, and fully embrace every freaking fabulous part of you. Let's dive in. Hello, my beautiful friends, and welcome to another episode of Road to Radical Visibility. My name is Rachel Freeman Sowers, also known as the Break Free Bitch, because I am passionate about helping people free themselves from toxic social constructs, opinions, and beliefs that have been holding them back from being 100% themselves, 100% of the time, no shame or guilt needed. And I am so excited to dive into this episode with you. It came about because I was actually messaged through WhatsApp while I was on the spin bike and a woman said to me, Rachel, life has been derailing me and I don't know how to get back on track. And I hear this a lot from my clients and actually it has happened to me quite a bit in the past. So today I'm going to give you five ways in which you can get back on your path, know what your path is and be able to stay in your truth no matter what is happening externally around you. Now I did a video about this on my Facebook page. You can go check it out. Rachel Freeman Sowers. And I asked all of you, what are the things that derail you the most? So life is pretty general. It can be personal or professional, right? It is when we are trained to react to the things that are happening externally because we are meant and I believe we are truly trained to stay in this fear of never being enough, of not being confident enough, of not being something enough, right? And so we get indoctrinated into this belief system by several different types of social constructs. We have just societal constructs. We have religious constructs. We have political constructs. I mean, like there's layers upon layers upon layers. And I want you to know that if you're struggling What happens is that when we get derailed, we repeat the same pattern over and over and over again. And if you are struggling with repeating the same pattern that you do not want to repeat anymore over and over and over again, then this episode is for you. All right, so let's dive in. I was messaged by a woman. She's like, life is derailing me. I heard her voice begin to tremble and she started crying and my heart went out to her. And the connection I have with this woman is quite incredible. When we first met together, um, there were some really magical things that happened between us energetically and with my guides and with people who she has had in her life. The other thing that people say derails them, there's some things, let me read them over here, is letting other people's words or actions get to me. So also this can be, do you often feel someone else's energy and you take on that energy or you take responsibility for how they're feeling? I had another woman just yesterday say, this person, like I'm making them feel this way. My friend, you do not make people feel a certain way. Now, I'm not talking about absolutes here, but the majority of the time, what someone says or does triggers a reaction within you from something that you have already experienced. And the body says, hold up, 
danger, danger, Will Robinson. We need to keep ourselves safe, right? So when we are around other people that have this energy and we just automatically um, have that energy come in or they their actions get to you. Now, this is something that's in combination with another thing that um, a woman told me. She said, the discomfort with the unknown, um, oh, allowing injustices to affect my faith and trust in unknown outcomes. So letting other people's words or actions get to you is one thing. It's like, how could they do that? Why are they doing that? That's so that so whatever you want to say, right? And those are judgments. And then we do it to ourselves, right? We learn to do these two things to ourselves. Like, why did I do that? I should have never done that. Why am I acting like this? This is such a bad way to act. Then we go into allowing injustices affect to affect my faith. This has been one that I've been working on for several years. And what happens is, is that the, I see an injustice and it's like, I want to rush in and fix it. And then I wonder, is anything just what is happening in the world? This has been highly um, felt through all this political stuff that just keeps it, um, getting jacked up with more energy and more energy. So letting other people's words or actions get to you, allowing injustices to affect my faith and trust in unknown outcomes. I had a client say to me, she's like, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. And she struggles with wanting to control everything. The need to control comes from fear. And so the discomfort of the unknown is like, I don't know who I am if this happens. I don't know what I'm going to do if this happens. Who am I going to be? What does this mean about me? And we take on things really personally when the majority of the time it has nothing to do with you, right? So being able to witness injustices and how do we allow ourselves to give some healing energy, empathetic energy, whatever we need so that we don't it doesn't destroy our faith in the goodness that is in this world. Cause I can guarantee you there's goodness in this world. And when you show up a hundred percent yourself, a hundred percent of the time, no shame or guilt needed that adds to the goodness of this world. Just FYI. And then I had another woman say, it's thinking that it's my problem. I did this to myself. I brought on this abuse. This happens a lot, um, with abuse survivors and, when we survive something, our brains, especially at a younger age, our brains don't know how to deal with it. So we take it on as ours. And she's like, I've done this to myself. This is my life. This is what I've done. This is another example of taking over responsibility for something that was never your responsibility to own. And we take this on so we can feel like we can control it so that we don't get derailed, right? Because if we feel something, it feels maybe we are out of control. It's too vulnerable. All right. So you're probably asking, Rachel, what do I do about this? Like, what are the ways that I can stay, discover, first of all, discover my path and make sure I know what my path is and then own my truth and stay on this path for my truth. All right. Here are the five things. Number one is identify your vision and how or what you want to experience in your life. When we don't know where we're going, when we don't know what we want, it is really hard to have a direction. Now, you don't always have to know what it looks like, but what I teach my clients is how is it that you want to be feeling and experiencing your world 24 seven? We go with that and then we remove the external stimulants to have us feel a certain way. Everything is generated internally. And then it's like, okay, I got, I know where I'm going. I know how to put myself back on my path. When we know and have a vision for our life and we can recreate those feelings that we want to feel, we naturally go the way that we want to go and experience the things that we want to experience. So the first thing is to identify your vision for how you want to experience life. If you're not sure, or if you've had goals and you haven't been able to reach those goals, I'm going to encourage you to check out the link at the, in the comments of this episode. 
about the new you true vision board event. This event is something that will help you gain that direction. It will help you identify your path. We're going to use neuroscience, music, movement, and a whole bunch of powerful collective energy to get you back on your path and allow you to stay there so you can experience life the way you want. Side note. All right. So number one is identify your vision and how you want to experience life. Number two is be selective with your input. So many times we are listening to all the things we are watching all the things and we zone out and we don't really realize that that stuff still goes into the subconscious. Just because you're not totally tuned into something doesn't mean it doesn't enter the mind. So this is where we have to be super intentional and selective. Who are we hanging out with? What kind of music are we listening to? What are we watching on TV? Who and when we are spending time with ourselves, what are we doing? Are we doing things that nurture ourselves? Be selective with your input. Now, sometimes this can seem really hard because we have been in patterned ways of being where we hang out with certain people. And then when we don't really want to, we can feel like I'm going to feel bad because they're going to think I don't want to hang out with them anymore, or I don't want to really be speaking to them right now. All of these things come up. We enter into a spiral of shame and guilt and automatically go back into the old pattern. And then we're like, why am I here again? So if this stuff comes up for you, I want you to know that your life is dependent on what you input into it. How you experience your life is what is a result of what the input is. So when you feel like you're going to make someone feel a certain way, I want to encourage you that that is not the case. You will not make them feel a certain way. If you say no to something, their reaction is their responsibility. Let me say it again. Their reaction is their responsibility. Okay. So selective with your input. Number three is to ignite your imagination and play with possibility. Now, I don't know about you, but I have a very wild imagination. <laughs> it thinks of the most wonderful things. And it can also, when I was younger, think of the most scary of things, right? And sometimes we've been taught, your, don't let your imagination run away with you. What are you doing daydreaming? And I think right now we have really lost a capacity because of fear and everything that's happening in the world and how we react to it, we've lost the gift of imagination. You all know that I use visualization with my clients. It is a number one way that my clients get the fastest progress and allow themselves to make sustainable changes in the world that they want and in their life. And so visualization is huge with imagination. Plus I have ADD. I'm a visual person. It works for me all the time. And this is how I have gotten to the place where I am today. So when we allow our imagination and we allow ourselves to dream and to say, this is what I want to experience. What if I was able to have a sense of confidence 24 seven? What would that look like? I was talking with a client. She's like, I don't know what it would be look like for me to be authentic and confident in a social interaction. So we started playing with the with imagination. She's a very cognitive person. She uses her mind to try and control. You're not going to control things with your, like with your mind like that. There's a mind body connection that happens and that allows you to then move into this space that you want to be feeling. Often people say, Rachel, you're so confident all the time. I didn't get here because I just was like, Oh, I want to be confident. I don't know how I had to take risks. I had to learn to trust myself. I have this ultimate self-trust about this is how I want to be interacting in the world. This is this way of being causes this feeling. Therefore I'm experiencing my life the way that I want to. Let me know if this is making sense. So you ignite your imagination and what could your life be like if you experienced it? So this is another way the True You Vision Board is really helpful. I have right now, as I look over, I have one, two vision boards and I have a third one in the hallway that's physical and health and wellness. And this one is business and this one is a spiritual one for me. So 
it, every time I see this vision board, it ignites this imagination. It ignites the feeling that I want to be having. And I say, what is my life going to look like when I am thriving in my life? What does that mean I get to experience? Where is it going in my business? What does that mean in my spiritual life, right? So these are the ways that it can help, but it's igniting your imagination and playing with possibility. Okay, that's number three. Number four is create an awareness of when you feel the way that you want to be feeling. Okay, so how many times have you known how you don't want to feel? You've experienced something in life or you're in an environment and you're like, I am not liking this. I do not want to feel this way. I do not want to feel like I'm being taken advantage of. I do not want to feel resentment. I do not want to feel like someone is demeaning me. I do not want to feel those things. And oftentimes we say that thing, that person is making me feel this. Mm -mm. No, (laughs) no, my friend, no. That person is not making you feel a certain way. That person is having an action, which is triggering something for you internally, right? And oftentimes I'll ask my clients, what do you want? And they're like, okay, well, Rachel, I don't want to feel like I'm always, like I'm not present in my own life. I don't want to feel like life is passing me by. And then I ask them again, what do you want? Oh, well, I don't, I don't want to miss out on my life. What do you want? Take a moment right now. I'm going to ask you, what do you want to experience in your life? I want to experience being present. I want to experience what it feels like when I'm with my children and my heart is so full and open. I want to experience when I'm doing my job, my profession, or in my business, this is how I want to experience it. For me, it's heart full open. For me, it's connected. For me, I want to feel like I am building a deeper relationship with the people I work with. The people I work with aren't just my clients. They are an integral part of my life. My joy and purpose and my great blessing to help guide these people to being 100% themselves, 100% of the time, no shame or guilt needed is freaking effing fabulous. And I want to feel excitement and I want to feel passion and I want to feel relationship and in relation with the world as a whole as I do that. What is it that you want to feel? Okay, that's number four, is to create an awareness of when you're feeling the way you want to be feeling. We know what it feels like when we don't. And remember, that's telling the reticular activation system to focus on that. When are the times you feel open? When are the times you are feeling joy? And soak that up and ramp that feeling up in your body. It's kind of like when Randy comes on to say yes to the dress. My dad and I used to watch that all the time together. I know it's weird. We also used to watch Naked and Afraid, but (laughs) that's neither here nor there. He's like, let's jack this up. Let's jack this shit up. And he puts on the veil and he puts on the sparkly belt and it's like, bam. And the girl just starts crying. You don't have to cry. I cry tears of joy all the time. I I cry tears of gratitude. We want to elevate that feeling in the body. Once you feel the way that you want to feel, you can actually recreate, recreate that over and over and over again. This is what helps you stop being derailed. This is what helps you remove this external stimulant that affects the way your internal self is feeling. All right. Number five is be and do more of that. Okay. People will say to me and my clients that I don't really have time to do more of what I love. Oh, friend, my beautiful friend. Yes, you do. We have spent so much time in our life and let me know in the comments if you have felt this going on this rat race, on this hamster wheel, doing the things that we don't really enjoy. Now there's going to be some things 
that we don't enjoy. I'll tell you this story and I think I've told it to you before, but I'm going to say it again. When I was little, I used to make myself do things that weren't pleasant, like sitting still and absolutely not moving, controlling my body, um, a myriad of other things. I was very young because at that young age, I knew um, in my life that I would have to be doing lots of things that I didn't really want to be doing and I needed to build my stamina. Like what seven-year-old thinks about that? (laughs) This seven-year-old thought about that, which has affected the way I viewed my life, right? And so when we, we are, when we have an opportunity to be and do more of that, that's what we need to make the time for. Now, how do I do it? Honestly, I don't know how you'll do it, but I can tell you if you want something bad enough and you value your life, you will find a way. If you are struggling to find a way, I would love for you to message me, put it in the comments. You know, you can DM me, whatever, reach out to me and say, Rachel, this is what I'm dealing with. Help me figure out how I can have more of this. Totally happy to do that. Because sometimes this is where the imagination comes in. What would be possible? How would it look? And we forget because we get so cognitive and like honed in and say like, these are the only things I can do. This is all that this is. I don't have any more energy for anything else. So many times I hear from my clients, by the time I get home, I'm so tired. I don't even get to really be with my kids. I don't get to be with my partner and I don't like that. So finding these times and doing more of that. If you get home and you're exhausted, yes, I totally understand. And I want you to remember what it felt like to be present with people that you love. I want you to remember what it felt like when you worked out and afterwards how you felt. I want you to remember what it feels like to put the food in your body that you want to be putting in your body. Recreate that feeling and you will get back on your path. I will warn you, this is not a one time. This is not a one and done thing. This is a practice. This is a commitment to you through self leadership about how you want to experience your life. Okay. So those are the five things. Now you will can expect to be pulled back into the old pattern. This is often called self-sabotage, right? Why do I keep sabotaging myself? Okay, because this isn't one and done. We have to develop a practice and a commitment to self. The other thing is, is that um, we often think like, oh, it was just a one-time thing and I felt happy. Or we only acknowledge that the happiness of our life is this much and the, and the suffering is this much. But what if we said, I am also controlling my happiness. I am also expanding. Maybe we just get rid of the word controlling. I'm also wanting to expand my happiness. And this is how I'm going to do that, right? It's an intentional focus, an intentional redirection. Self-sabotage can look like, oh, I don't really deserve this. This was a one-time thing and it was really great, but now I'm back to the old way. And we have this feeling of deserving. So many women and people in marginalized communities, even my LGBTQ plus, my own LGBTQ plus community say like, well, I deserve to be happy. And just in um, technical terms, deserving is I deserve it because I've done something. The fact of the matter is, is that because you are here, because you are alive, because you are human and you want happiness, you can have it. You don't have to do anything for it. You've already done the thing, which is being here, right? You are already here. And so having to say, I deserve it is a way that we justify. You don't have to justify what you want. You don't have to justify if you want more sex. You don't have to justify if you want more connection. You don't have to justify if you want more money. You don't have to justify anything. I want it because I want it and that's full stop. That then allows us to remove these other external things that may keep us from having it, right? 
There's also a fear of this unknown and actually feeling the way that we want to feel. The body, your body has been trained to keep yourself safe. When you start shifting your belief system out of toxic social constructs and opinions and beliefs, when you start developing your own, it can feel really scary. And the body is like, Hey, wait, we can't do this. We can't go there. Like, this is not what this is not on the plan. (laughs) And then we'll want to go back. This is the thing when people say one step forward, three steps back. I want to do three steps forward, recognizing I'm going to be pulled back into an old pattern, being able to identify that pattern when I'm being pulled back and say, no, thank you. I appreciate body that you want to go there. And yet we are safe to go to this new space. We are practicing this self-leadership. So expect to feel derailed when you're trying to stay on your own path. Expect it to be there and have these skills available to you. The minute you start feeling derailed, start thinking about your vision, envisioning your vi- your vision in your mind, seeing it in your mind's eye, pulling up and restoring those feelings that you have when you see yourself in that space, right? Okay, so that is a lot. Now, one last thing. In order for this to be sustainable, you need to create a deep safety in your mind and your body and your soul all together. And in order to create this deeper safety, we have to be honest with ourselves and remove the fear, shame, and judgment that we often feel when we notice We are not living our lives the way that we want to. This removal of the fear, the shame, the doubt, the guilt is essential for you to keep moving forward. It doesn't happen all at once. When you feel that fear and that shame and that doubt and that guilt come up, there are different ways for you to deal with that. And maybe that'll be another episode. But one really quick thing you can do is you can say, this is my life. This is how I want to live it. Because when I live my life life like this, it empowers other people to live their lives the way that they want to. This morning I was doing a Peloton ride. It was a Lizzo one. I'll put it in the comments below so you can, if you're on Peloton, I use the Peloton app. And um, it was all about when I shine bright, other people then have permission to come and shine their light with me. When I am full of self love and, um, other people are then inspired to be and filled with their own self love and shine that right. We, through our own ways of being, we, um, gather other people with us and then they begin to do that exact same thing. And that is really what is helpful in making this world and a sustainable way of being and a shift for the better here. Okay. So there's so much beauty and truth and power within you. And my friend, I think it's time to access it. So if you're looking for a place to have a really good time, to focus on some goals and to actually be empowered and shift, um, neurological connections in order to experience life the way that you want to. I want to encourage you to click on the link in the comments for the true you vision board event. The next one will be on March 21st. Also, I want to empower you that if you've been struggling and there is something within you saying, I no longer want to be experiencing my life, my life like this. I no longer want to be in this place. There's more for me to do when I am being more, I am more present with the people that I love. When I am fully being myself, I am able to spread more joy, more love. And I am able honestly to just enjoy my life 1000% more Then I'd love to have you look at the part of the hundred percent you experience, which is called unleash a hundred percent you. I'll put that in the link below too. Okay. My friends, I would love to hear your thoughts about this episode. I can't wait for you to listen and hear what really motivated you 
and how you will keep returning back to your path and your truth. Use these five things that I've given you to get yourself back on track so that you can experience your life exactly the way that you want to. All right, I'm going to end it here. I'll end this video like I end every single video. Please make sure to stay true to yourself, be kind to others, and always, always, always honor the wise one that is within you. Go and be 100%. Until next time. Hold up, don't go yet. If this episode inspired you to be 100% yourself, 100% of the time, no shame or guilt needed, even just that little bit more, I would love to hear from you in the comments below. I'm here and I know you are too to make a positive impact in the world. So don't forget to share the love. And if you were left wanting more of this type of kick-ass content, then don't forget to click the like and subscribe button. Until next time, make sure to stay true and be you. Until then, bye.